Hello, in uh, this video I'm going to show you how to do 3D text in NX. It's actually really simple. There's just a few little tricks that you might not be aware of uh, in order to get the text oriented in the right direction for you. But we're going to go through that a little bit here and talk about the different things we can do with 3D text. So as far as making the text itself, it's relatively simple. Uh, under the curve tab, there is going to be a text button here. Um, <clears throat> once you pick that, it's going to bring text out on your screen. Uh, the text is going to be oriented how the X and Y axes are oriented on your work coordinate system. So you have to get that oriented in the right direction. Um, I'll show you how to move that in a minute here if you're not aware on uh, how to manipulate that. Uh, but as far as what you can do with the text, it's pretty simple. Type in up here what you want your text to be. Select what font you want to use. It has a lot of different fonts and it will use the fonts installed on the computer. So I have some interesting ones installed for some other projects I was working on. Um, but we'll go back and change this to simple Arial font. Um, you have the options to make it italic, bold, bold italic, um, and do some other things with it. Uh, if you come out on the screen, you're going to select your origin point for your text. Uh, you can change where that is anchored, so it's got all the options you would normally have, top left, top center, um, all those middle centers, the one I like to use, or middle bottom. Um, either way, you can select whatever it is you want. That point is going to be associative to what you select if you select an actual object, so it's going to uh, stick with it. Um, so we're going to select that as long as you have the associative button turned on in settings, that is. Um, so once you select that, it'll show you what your text is. A little bit further down, you can see there's some dimensions that you can change on your text, so you can control the height, you can control the length, and you can control the width scale and a shear value to give it an angle. Um, the length and width scale kind of work, it's either one or the other. So if I change the length to like, let's say seven inches, you can see that it automatically changes the width scale. And then if I change that back to 100%, changes the width back to, or the length back to whatever uh, value it was. So these numbers you kind of have to monkey with a little bit to get them to do what you want. Again, if I change the height, it keeps the length of what I had before. So if I want it to be 100% for the width value, I've got to change that every time I change the height of the text. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's not that difficult to work with. Um, so anyway, once you hit OK, it creates your text. So they, there's your 2D text that you're going to use uh, to turn it into a three-dimensional text. After that, you're just going to use your extrude command to come out here and select it. You can select it as feature curves, which works similar to what you would do with a sketch. You can select it as single curves and just select certain parts of your text. So depending on what you want to do with it, uh, you can change how you're selecting it. But you just select your text, um, select the distance that you want, and you make three-dimensional text. So now that's a solid object that I can do other things with. Um, relatively speaking, you can change the font and size of this text very fairly easily. Some of the fonts don't work very well with this though. Um, so it depends on what kind of font it is you're looking at. And then occasionally you'll have little issues with your extrusions and things. Uh, another thing to note about the, the solid models, sometimes that when you have a corner in your text that you're using, it may or may not turn out to be a corner when you extrude it. Uh, it's generating splines. So uh, you got to pay attention to that. There may be things you cannot do with this solid after you've created it, um, like putting blends on it or cutting things away or moving faces. So something to think about when you're picking your different uh, text fonts. I've got another part here, and on this part, I want to put some text on this front face, and I'm just going to make a little indentation in the part for the text. Uh, so 
I want it dead center on the part though. And to do that with text, uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work before I can start. So I'm gonna start a sketch on that face and I need a point in the middle of that block. So I'm just gonna draw a line from the midpoint of one side of it and then uh, line this point up with the other midpoint. And then I'm going to just use this sketch to control the location of my text. So that's really all I can do in here. You can't put text in the sketch. There's no text command here. So I'm going to hit finish sketch, come back to my curves. Um, <clears throat> One thing I need to do though, my WCS is not oriented properly for to put a sketch on or a text on this face. So I'm going to come down here and double click on it and I'm going to rotate it so that the Y and the X are on the same plane as my face. It doesn't have to be in the same Z location. So if I move this back, I can still put text on this face. Uh, it's going to use the midpoint or the end point of this line to locate where it's at in the Z direction, but the X and Y still is gonna have to be oriented based on my WCS. So I'm gonna put text mid center is my alignment point again, select that point and hit okay. I'm not gonna change any of the dimension values for this one, but now I've got text on that face and I can extrude it. And subtract it. And get my three-dimensional text on this block. Okay, so that's something that we can do with a sketch to use it to locate it. You can use any kind of location point as long as it makes sense for the alignment of your text. Uh, we can also go down here and change where the point is on the text. Uh, let's do bottom center. It moves the point. It doesn't stay attached to that line now, but we can drag it around and I can pick the origin of the text and reattach it to the line with its new anchor position and hit OK. And now also if we change the sketch, and I move this line down, finish sketch, you can see the text moved with the end point of the line. So it's still, it is associative, it's attached to the position that I put it in, as long as I pick something um, that it can relate to. We also can put text on an arc. Uh, so in this drawing or this part, I've got a sketch that already defines what the arc that I want to use to have the text be placed on. Uh, so really after that, it's just knowing that you need to come up here and go to text and go to the type section and change it from planar to on curve. Select your curve and it places the text along that curve you can see. Uh, so if I make it a little bit longer here, you can See that it's got a nice curve to it, follows the arc very nicely. Um, as far as what you can change in here, most of the settings are the same as far as what the normal text would be. Uh, if I make it a little smaller here. Uh, you can change where it's located on the arc. You can either come down here and type it. So right now it's at 50% of the arc length, so it's right in the middle. Uh, or you can come out here and drag it. Uh, you cannot drag it off of the arc though, so the size of the arc will define um, where your text is placed and how far you can move it. Uh, so I like to keep the arcs partial, to be honest, because then it makes it real easy to find where the center of them is if it's the center that I need. Uh, but you can also justify it from the right position or the left position, and you can drag it all the way over to the side, uh, either direction. So you can. You can place your text just about anywhere along that arc, uh, but for most of my applications, center and 50% is usually what I've set my sketch up to. Uh, after that, this is the same as with the text that we did before. You can create it and extrude it or do whatever you need to do with it. 
to make it into a solid object. So the text should work exactly the same once you're done with it as it did with the flat text. So uh, that's really all I can tell you about three-dimensional text. Lots of things you can do with it afterwards. You can extrude it up and trim it to a surface. Uh, you can uh, put edge blends on all the corners if you need to. Um, so after that, it's just a solid that you can model and do with uh, whatever you need. So I hope that helps some of you, and thanks for watching.